do, what to do, what to do. Welcome back to the channel, baby. Yeah. What to do, what to do, what to do, half the J family. Welcome back to the channel, baby. Yes. It's your boy, half. And your girl, J. And we back with, with another, another reaction, reaction video. video. All right, y'all. So happy Friday to everybody out there. Yes. Hope happy everybody, Friday. Right. Hope everybody enjoying their Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's playoff games today, y'all. So let's see what happens today. Yes. So anyway, with that being said, we're going to hold you guys. Let them know who we're going to react to today. We are reacting to Candace Owens. Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. And the commentary. What's she talking about today? I do not support George Floyd. Mm. Here's why. Mm. Now, somebody wanted us to react to this one, I think, off of the other one that we did. Okay. So, I guess it's supposed to be something in cahoots or whatever with that one. Okay. You know what I mean? So, we're going to jump into this one. But before we do, everybody's out there, who have not yet subscribed to the channel, come up top. I didn't hit it that time. Boom. Mm. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yes. Turn your post notifications on. Yes. Like and share this video. Yes. And comment down below, baby. Come and join the squad, on. man. Have a J. We over here kicking it off. What? Good vibes, baby. baby. Good vibes. Boom. All right, let's see what Candace is talking about, man. She looked kind of younger on this one. So this one looked like it probably was a little while. Right. You know what I mean? So let's see what she's talking about. Hello, Facebook family. Um, I have decided to do this video. It has been weighing very heavily on my heart um, and on my mind as well. And it was something that I wanted to say early on, but there were so many emotions and so much pressure um, for me to go with the popular opinion about who George Floyd was. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult when there are just so many external pressures to say what you believe. And this was an instance where I felt like my silence would have been better in the beginning, but the more that I think about it, I realize that we are being sold a lot of lies and at the detriment to the black community, at the detriment to the white community, and at the detriment to America as a whole. So I um, want to come out and say uh, that I do not support George Floyd and the media depiction of him as a martyr for black America. I'm going to explain why and I hope that some of you guys will understand where I'm coming from. Um, I have spent a considerable amount of time reading a lot um, of black authors that I think are some of the most brilliant black Americans breathing. Um, Walter Williams, Shelby Seale, Thomas Sowell, and I recently came across something that was an idea that was planted into my head by Shelby Seale, and it's been something that I cannot um, forget. It is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And it's something that I hope for the black Americans that are watching will stick with you for the rest of your life. Shelby Steele said that the black community is unique from other communities. Um, our, our culture is unique from other communities um, because we are the only community that caters to the bottom denominator of our society. Now let me explain what that means. Um, it means to say that not every black American is a criminal, not every black American is committing crimes, but we are unique in that we are the only people that fight and scream and demand support and justice for the people in our community that are up to no good. You would be hard pressed to find um, you know, a Jewish person who has spent five stints in prison, uh, who commits a crime and dies while committing a crime, and that the Jewish people champion and demand justice for. You will be hard pressed to find this in white America. You will be hard pressed to find this even in Latino America. Uh, if there is a person that is spent multiple times in prison, you are not going to see a bunch of Latinos coming out um, demanding justice for this person, even if, and I want to be very clear, what I'm saying is not any defense for Derek Chauvin. I hope Derek Chauvin gets the justice that, um, that he deserves to be um, you know, implemented upon him and that the family um, of George Floyd deserves justice for the way that he, that he died. Um, but I also am not going to accept the narrative that this is the best the black community has to offer. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason it has become fashionable over the last 
uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Um, and it is something that I find to be despicable. Want to speak on her? She's, right. she's just speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. She's speaking the truth. Yeah. Like she said, his family deserves justice for how he was, how he died. Right. And, you know, how he died was wrong. Right. But America I, did turn him into a hero. Right. And I understand what she's saying, too. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, uh, you don't, like you said, fight and pull and scratch for someone that's doing something wrong or have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And now is regretting what they have done and making a big public uh, cry out for, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for help now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, from their, from their community, from mm -hmm. their people, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, so I get exactly what she's saying, mm -hmm. you know, and like you said, she's right on the point with that too, you know what I'm saying? And just to, just, to, I just want to say something, like if he was a child molester and, you know, you know, if he did anything wrong like that, like, would everyone be so supportive of him if he, you know, mm -hmm. if he had committed that type of crime? You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and, and still died the same way he and died. And still died the same way right, he died. Right, like, right, would right. everyone... Still be on board like that. Right, would he right, still I be a hero? Right, 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 right. Good question. Just, good question. just wondering. Very good question has become fashionable over the last uh, five or six years for us to turn criminals into heroes overnight. Um, and it is something that I find to be despicable and it's something that I refuse to stand by any longer and I'm not going to play a part in it no matter how much pressure comes from black liberals and black conservatives as, as some token of people wanting you to believe that this is the only way you can be black is you have to say this was wrong and that this, you know, this person was amazing. I won't do that. Mm. Uh, George Floyd was not an amazing person um, and as soon as this video hit the internet, I did just basic searches. Uh, everyone jumped on it and called and, and was looking at the police officer and everyone agrees that the police officer was wrong and the police officer has been arrested. Um, so that is not, the reason I'm not discussing that is because that is not something that has been misconstrued in the media. Uh, he has been turned into the devil that he is and there is no reason for us to harp on that any longer because white Americans are not uplifting Derek Chauvin as a victim or pretending that he's an amazing human being. But George Floyd is being uplifted as an amazing human being. Um, and uh, for those of you who have not yet seen the clips and did not pursue or wait for more clips to come out, uh, first and foremost, George Floyd at the time of his arrest was high on um, fentanyl and he was high on methamphetamine. Uh, this came back in both of his autopsy reports. Uh, if you pursue the 911 transcript, you can see the person describing somebody who is out of their mind high, um, and which is what made the person fearful because he tried to, you know, to uh, use a, a, a bill that I guess was a fake bill to purchase something, and then he was outside acting weird, and they, in their police call, said that this person was obviously distorted on drugs. Uh, when he is put into handcuffs and is put against the wall, a baggie of what looks to be like uh, cocaine or uh, some, it's, it's white, it's a white baggie that he drops onto the floor that you can see in an image. If you look up the clip, the media is refusing to circulate it. You can find it on Twitter. If you if you use DuckDuckGo and look up um, George Floyd baggie, uh, you can watch the clip yourself with your own eyes. Uh, he had drugs on him at the time of his arrest. Um, now. Barring all of that, nobody thinks that he should have died during this arrest, but what I find despicable to be is that everyone is pretending that this man lived a heroic lifestyle when he didn't, and I want to talk about what his lifestyle was um, leading up to this moment and why I refuse to accept the narrative that this person is is a martyr or, or should be lifted up in the black community. Now, look, I get exactly what she is saying mm -hmm. because I don't look at him as no hero myself. Right. You feel me? So that's not... Somebody, I'm, even one of my uncles, I don't look at too as a hero, and you know he be on some weird shit too. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the same time, see, I mean, I, I, it kind of like see, it's kind of like she's like with two different things with it. Like, like I'm getting that she she don't look at him as a hero, which is understandable. I get that. Mm -hmm. But then she said he's not. He was an amazing person. He wasn't an amazing person. Mm -hmm. But I feel to his family that he was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The ones close to him, his what? His children felt like he was an amazing person. Mm -hmm. Now, 
every individual may think how they want to think about this man because mm-hmm. they didn't know this man personally. Right. They can only go off of what they have heard, seen in the tabloids, or whatever the case may be. Right. But as far as his family and friends is concerned, kids and things like that, I'm pretty sure they feel that he's an amazing person no matter what he has mm-hmm. done. Just like you're a mother, I'm a dad. Mm-hmm. Even if our kids have done something that they know they shouldn't have been doing, we know they should not have been doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they made that mistake, but we still feel that they're still an amazing person, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because those, those are kids. I mean, mm-hmm. just because they made that one mistake or two, three, four, five mistakes. Right. You know what I'm saying? It just, it, I, I feel like it still don't define who you truly are. Because we know who you truly are. Right, right. Now, the reason why you did what you did, that's, that's, that's your business. We don't right. know that. Right. We know what led to that, but we know who the person had, that you have been up until that. You know what I mean? Screw up, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, I get what she's saying. I respect that. But at the same time, uh, they haven't taken into consideration that, you know, to some people, he is an amazing person. I know she's probably speaking just for herself. Right, right. So I get that. She's speaking right. for herself. Right? I, I understand. But I'm pretty sure to his family and friends and loved ones, he was, he was an amazing person. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, he's still a human being. Mm-hmm. And uh, human beings are amazing people, period. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the way I look at it. But, but, you know. But she's just saying, like, as far as the black community. Yeah. Like, no matter who it is, you know, we always uplift. No, 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 absolutely. 100%. No, 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 100%. 100%. I I, I get that. And then if you go against it. You're you're, 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 you're fake. Right. You feel me? Yeah, I I get that 100%. And that's why. And I I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he was probably an amazing father. Right husband if he was married right. you know and had his his and his wife like family. everybody yeah made, made a bad mistake very bad mistake you know so you know and she's just saying like why is he the face or the the martyr of you know of the movement right right you know, right, 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 right. Which, which I, I agree with that though 100 mm-hmm. i agree with that like i said i would not look up to nobody like that myself so you know and one more thing yeah, sorry okay. <laughs> it's just you know and I feel because the black community does that, mm-hmm. a lot of people will continue to do wrong and, you know, because they know that the black community is always going to rally and make noise about their wrongdoing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like she said, the Jewish community isn't going to do it. The right. white community, right. the Hispanic community is not going to do it. Right. And it's, it, it just... It's like we baby every situation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I, It's like giving a child a pat on the back for bad behavior. Right. You know? Right. I don't know. No, I hear Maybe you. I'm just talking. No, I hear you. That we should be buying t-shirts uh, with his name on it, okay? So, here we have, first and foremost, let's start from the bottom of his record. And by the way, I am not saying that if you have a record, you don't deserve a second chance. I think people get arrested, um, and some people can serve time in prison, and I believe in second chances, but I do draw the line when it comes to uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, ch- and ninth chances. 1998, he spent uh, 10 months in prison for theft with a firearm. Uh, that was the first prison stint that I could find on him. In 2002, he spent eight months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2004, just two years later, he spent another 10 months in prison for a cocaine offense. In 2005, he spent another 10 months in prison for having um, less than one gram of cocaine on him again. Um, In 2007, and this was the biggest instant um, uh, that I had that made me realize this was a horrible human being that I would, I'm not going to pretend was a good person. In 2005, a woman who was pregnant uh, received a knock at the door um, and she went to the door and the person pretended to be someone that worked um, for the water department. So she opened her door and quickly realized that the person at her door did not work for the water department and attempted to slam it. Um, at the moment that she was attempting to slam it, a Ford pulled up and another five men jumped out of the car and one of which was George Floyd came up to the door and they forced their way inside to her home, uh, inside of her home. Wow. Um, mind you, this woman is pregnant. At that point, uh, George Floyd took out a gun and pressed it to her stomach. Um, and she was screaming, begging for her life and, uh, and he 
put her inside of her living room and instructed one of his criminal friends that was with him uh, to watch her and to make sure she didn't leave the living room so he was playing guard while they ransacked her home looking for drugs and money they did not find um, drugs they ended up taking I believe her wallet and her cell phone fortunately for her her neighbor um, observed what was going on and caught the license plate of the people as they pulled off and called 911 and when 911 was able to um, they were able to track down the car uh, of which uh, George Floyd was the driver um, and they arrested him and two years later he was sentenced to five years in prison um, for that instance um, now you can say uh, the media is portraying it like he was just getting his life together after you know being released in 2014 following that incident. Uh, he was just getting his life together and, and moved and was going to start afresh. I'd like to believe all of those things. And no, I never knew nothing about that. <laughs> That's why it's good to, you know, to educate and just. Right. I mean, I'm not going to. I mean, that's not going to make me think not different. change I mean, any different. Right. Yeah, I still feel that. His, I still feel his family. Feel oh yeah, his that. family. Now, I'm not saying that I feel right that he was an amazing person. Right, right. Let me get that straight for everybody. I'm not saying that I feel that way. But what I'm of saying is, of course, his family is yeah. going to right, 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 right. think that about him. <coughs> right. And let me be clear. I do not think that <coughs> he should be the face of the black community as far as a hero. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't feel that way. But now, again, do I feel like? Uh, he was done wrong. Oh yeah. Absolutely, I feel that way. Absolutely, I feel that way. I don't care, you know, unless he was trying to kill somebody at the time and they would have to defend themselves. Different story, you know what I mean? But that wasn't the case. So. And she, Candace, even said that it was wrong. You absolutely, know what I'm absolutely, absolutely. She just feel. Yeah, and I didn't know he did all that. I didn't. Either. And that's super wrong, right there. Mm -hmm. Super wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I mean, you can't, I mean, a pregnant woman at that, right. like, nah, that's foul right there, though. Mm -hmm. That's real talk. His life together and, and moved and was going to start afresh. I'd like to believe all of those things. And there's a gap and he never got in trouble for five years until this instant when the police were called on him again. Um, uh, but you are defying common sense to believe that this person suddenly became an exemplary character but happened to be high on fentanyl and methamphetamine um, and, and trying to use a bill um uh, a fake bill to purchase something and so in my opinion uh george floyd was a criminal <laughs> he was a criminal mm -hmm. and just because he was a criminal doesn't mean he deserved to die right. at the knee of a police officer but it does mean and that's all i'm saying mm -hmm. that's all i'm saying yes he was a criminal yes he was wrong for the things that he had done no i did not condone that at all not one bit but again, like she just said, he did not deserve to die. That's all right. I was saying. Right. That's all I was saying. So everybody who was jumping on me the last video in the comments and all that, <laughs> she, that's all I was saying. He did not deserve to die. That's all I was saying. I never said he was a good person. Just because he was a criminal doesn't mean he deserved to die at the knee of a police officer. But it does mean that I am not going to play a part of the broken black culture mm. that always wants to martyr criminals, who wants to pretend they were these upstanding human beings that just wanted to help society, uh, that just wanted to reach out um, and, and uplift society. And we're, he has a rap sheet that is long, that is dangerous. He was an example of a violent criminal his entire life, okay? Up until the very last moment. Now, again, I want to be clear, this is not a defense for Derek Chauvin. No one in, that I have spoken to, no one in the news is defending Derek Chauvin. He is getting what he has coming to him. Okay, great. But why are we pretending that this criminal should be upheld as a citizen, uh, a, 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 as a martyr in black America? A martyr for a fake narrative, by the way. Police brutality, racially motivated police brutality is a myth, okay? So let's get into that. Not only are we using this death, right, and allowing it to cause these riots and protests, pretending this was some upstanding citizen in the black community who was tackled down um, and, and killed for no reason, right? Not only are we allowing it to inspire riots, riots in which black people are dying, in which actual upstanding black citizens are dying. Case in point, I'm sure you guys have all now seen uh, David, uh, the, the sheriff that just was shot and killed uh, because he was trying to protect uh, a, a pawn shop. Please look him up if you haven't seen it. I'm blanking on his last name. His first name is David, um, who was shot and killed for trying to protect a pawn shop from looters. An upstanding citizen, an actual head of a police, he was the head of a police his entire life, 77 years old, did everything right. 
right? So we now have to kill upstanding black citizens because a non-upstanding <coughs> black citizen, a career black criminal died. <coughs> now, did he deserve to die in that manner? No. I can't say it enough. No, he didn't deserve to die in that manner. But I will be damned if the rest of us upstanding black citizens have to suffer because of this incident that rarely ever happens in America. So here are some numbers for you people that are still believing that police brutality is a real, racially motivated police brutality is a real thing. First and foremost, okay, you have a 25% higher chance as a violent white criminal of dying at the hands of a police officer than you do as a black criminal. Last year, a total of nine unarmed black, black men were killed by police officers and 19 white men were killed by police officers. For those of you that aren't good at mathematics, right, you might be thinking, oh, but Candace, white people represent 60% of the population and black people represent just 13% of the population. It doesn't matter what percentage of the population you represent, it matters what percentage of the violent criminal community you represent. And unfortunately, black community create, uh, um, commits a disproportionate amount of crimes compared to the white community. Let me tell you, 6% of the population, right, black men, 6% of the population accounts for 44% of all murders in this country, according to 2018 statistics. That is what you call a gap. And yet white people, white people who represent 60% of the population, we represent 13, uh, black men are 6%, uh, only, uh, represent 50% of all the murders, right? That makes no sense. That, that makes no sense. A six point variation in a community where we are, we are extreme minorities. We commit 50% of all violent offenses, evenly split, and we're only 13% of the population, okay? So we have a lot more encounters with police officers. And don't say the police officers are coming around because we're black. I'm talking about violent criminals. I'm talking about murder, 44% of murders, okay? You wanna talk about real statistics? The, the, the police officers have way more to be fearful of in the black community than the other way around, okay? We commit, on average, a, a police officer is 18 and a half times more likely to be killed by a black person than the other way around. Okay, so this entire narrative is complete smoke and mirrors. It's all made up. It's just election fodder. It's white versus black because it's an election year, not because black Americans are suffering at the hands of police officers more than white Americans. Do some police officers do the wrong thing? Yes. I don't think there's anybody in the world who has not encountered a police officer and thought this person is an absolute jerk who is power tripping, whether you are black or white. We know they exist. And we know they're always going to exist, by the way, because they're human beings. And sometimes human beings suck. In fact, if you want to attack a community for, for you know, accidental slayings or brutality, did you know that doctors accidentally kill a quarter of a million people every year because of mistakes? Did you know that there's, there's been doctors that have been arrested for being serial killers, that just were killing people because they wanted to? Do we protest and boycott doctors? Do we assume all doctors are horrible human beings because some doctors are? Or do we realize that society is not perfectible? People suck in every profession. It is no excuse to paint society with a broad brush. It is certainly no excuse to accept a Democrat narrative, okay, that black people are being disproportionately hunted down by police officers because of the color of their skin. You wonder the best way to avoid not being not being brutalized by a police officer is to not is to is to limit the amount of encounters you need to have with them, especially when it comes to violent crimes. Okay, I am not going to stand for this continual bottom feeding narrative of us martyring people that have had five, six, seven stints in prison and then pretending they were upstanding heroes to our community. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Excuse my language. It's absolute bullshit. And I'm talking. I, I I agree with her. On a lot of what she's saying, mm -hmm. but then there's some in there that, of course, you know, you have to throw in there too. That um, I, f I feel that the community that you stay in can pinpoint you as a suspect, so to speak. For example, what I mean by that is, right? Let's say we you live in the hood, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of drug dealing going around over there. A lot of you know guns, dope, whatever the case may be. But let's say you're an outstanding citizen. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not a part of the bullshit, none of that. Mm -hmm. But you just live in that community because you're still on your way up in life and, you know, you're trying to make your way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're leaving out your gate, you and your boyfriend, 
and he's an outstanding student as well, paying his taxes the whole nine yards, right? Mm -hmm. You pull out your gate, you're going down the street, cops just pull you over for no reason. Your tags is right, mm -hmm. seatbelt's on, mm -hmm. you're losing your blinker, nothing going on, mm -hmm. but he just pulls you over. Mm -hmm. He gives you the reason why is because you didn't use your blinker, you did a California stop or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Would you consider that racial profiling? Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, that's why I say it's, it's not always about just because of, of, of the crime or that you may have committed or something like that. You, you can it's just be in the neighborhood that you live in and the police can still just feel like you're like them, like the, like, like the criminals, just because of your skin color and the, coming in the, the community that you stay in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing is going for a white community. If there's a lot of drug dealing going on over there and a lot of killings it's going to be the same thing you know what and I'm saying? that's what she was saying just like in every profession they're human and that's what I'm saying a lot of human beings right right right, right, right. But, 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 but she was saying like 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 you had to be a criminal though in order for uh, to get racially profiled or? correct like that but I don't think they're saying had to be I think you could just live in that community and mm -hmm. get racially profiled because of what goes on in that community you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And those certain, like she said, the certain human beings, as far as in that profession, look at you that way, mm -hmm. even though you're not. You know what I'm saying? Just because you live in that community. And I say that because my mom had got pulled over before like that. And and I have too. That's what I'm saying. And her background was squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. But it's just the neighborhood she lived in, mm -hmm. the car she was driving, they decided to pull her over. Right. And the officer, he was honest to me. Yeah. He, he, he told me why he pulled me over. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was because of... The, the neighborhood I was leaving out of. That's what I'm saying. And he, he was honest with Right, me. that's what and I'm he, saying. And he let me go. Right, 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 right. So, right, yeah. So, you know. I didn't take it as him racially profiling me, though. No, but some people will. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and like I said, speaking of like what she's saying, that's what got kind of like what she's going with. Like, mm -hmm. you know, some, some people uh, live with that or feel that that's racially profiling. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. in their mind, as, a, as an officer, I know what area I'm in. Right. So the chances are high that you could be a, a joke deal with a criminal right, or something right. like that. You know what I'm saying? So, that's all I'm saying. Bullshit. It's bullshit. Excuse my language. It's absolute bullshit. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to play pretend. I'm tired of sitting here and being called a coon or an Uncle Tom because I won't play this bottom feeding game with you. If you want to hang up posters of criminals on your wall and talk about them as your martyrs, do it. Do it. You can do it. Kobe Bryant was my idol, okay? I'll keep a photo, I'll keep a photo of Kobe Bryant. You can keep one of George Floyd and pretend he was an upstanding human being that just once or twice put a gun across a pregnant woman's belly. Could you imagine that woman right now? That black woman, by the way, right? Watching everybody pretend this person was an upstanding human being who just at the age of 42 and five prison stints was going to get his life together. I mean, it's embarrassing. We are embarrassing in that regard, right? We, this is why we have a cycle and a toxic culture because nobody wants to tell the truth in black America. It's so easy to be a victim. It's so easy to ask black and white people to bow down and apologize and do all these things for us. It's crap. It's crap. It's a lie. It's a farce. Our biggest problem is us, okay? It's why we don't talk about it when black on black crime happens. It's why we don't talk about it when 40, 40 black people are killed in one weekend during Memorial Weekend um, in Chicago. We got we to gotta pause it. That is Fast though, truth. and I always say that though. Right. And, and I was, and anybody who knows me, I say I was never like with that Black Lives Matter movement to right. begin with. Right. Cause like I said then, I'm saying now, it's only when it's a so-called police brutality against yes, blacks. Right. Mm -hmm. But like she said, that's when, when the movement. That's when the movement get, You know what I'm saying? I lost my brother to a black man. Yeah. You lost your brother Several to a black to to a black yeah. man. Yeah. And no one. <laughs> no, no one, movement. No movement was done for None. our brothers. None. So, yeah, I, I feel that real talk. Man. And it's, it's that's real talk. I always said that. I always said that. When the black movie? America got to wake up. Yeah, when it's Just black on black, black don't nothing happen. Nothing. Nothing. You feel me? But nothing. Oh, man, yeah, I, I, man, that's a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Thousand percent, right there, boy. Mm -hmm. Oof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and people hate on this lady for speaking facts. Yeah. It's crazy. 40, 40 black people are killed in one weekend during Memorial Weekend um, in Chicago. We don't want to talk about any of that stuff. We don't want to talk about Baltimore. We don't want to talk about New Jersey. We don't want to talk about any of these places where black people are being slaughtered by other blacks because that would, that would mean 
that we had to be personally accountable, right? That would mean personal responsibility. We don't do personal responsibility in our community. We don't do it. We blame white people, right? We only point a camera to white people when they do something, even though we do it at a way higher rate to ourselves, right? We celebrate our drug dealers. We're the only community, right, that would ever create hashtags to free people from prison because they committed crimes. Like free Meek Mill, free this rapper, free this rapper. How hard is it to not spend multiple times in prison? How difficult is that? Is that too hard for us? Is it, I mean, is that way too high of a mountain for us to scale to do the right thing, to be upstanding citizens? That is the call to action that I have for Black America with Lexi. Like, why do we keep fulfilling this narrative? What do you think the perception of us, by the way, is on the outside? You ever look at the comments? You ever go into like an anonymous blog and see what people say? Oh, just black people being black people. Right. I see those racist comments. Oh, just black people got to riot. Black people got to be black people. You know how they are. Oh, just black people being ignorant. That That is the perception. When people get to be anonymous and talk about us, that's what they think about us, right? right? They think that we are the kind of people that will forever uphold criminals as the martyrs of our society, that we will never take account for the things that we do wrong, mm -hmm. right? That we don't have it within us to educate ourselves to get ahead. And that for those of us that actually do it, well, we get called coons, right? Right. You got Condoleezza Rice, she's a coon. Larry Elder, he's a coon. Right. Dr. Ben Carson, brain surgeon, first ever to perform uh, the surgery of splitting uh, twins that are connected by the head. He's a coon, right? What right. a loser he is. What a stupid guy he is. Tanya. And I just got to point this out too. A black man, a lot. When a black man treats a woman right, he's called a simp. And in our community, yeah. I'm pretty sure other races say that as well, but it's very rare. Yeah. In the black community, it's just, that's just a thing. Like if you treat a woman with respect and you know, treat her with love and care, they're called a simp. And that's so sad. Like we're, black men are, are they get praised for treating a woman like a slut or like she doesn't mean anything. They get high fives and daps and props for that. And that's just really sad in our community. And a lot of women have grown so used to being treated that way that they don't see any wrong in it and still uphold and call a man a king for treating a woman badly. That's sad. Right. That's sad. Right. To perform uh, the surgery of splitting uh, twins that are connected by the head. He's a coon, right? What a loser he is. What a stupid guy he is. Kanye West says he, he's not going to be told to do it because of the color of his skin. He's a coon. He's lost. He's in the sunken place. The sunken place. That's where we all are, right? Because we demand more and we will get more out of this society because we will be, a, we, we're going to get ahead, right? That's what's going to happen. We're going to get ahead. Black conservatives get ahead because we don't subscribe to this narrative. Because you're not going to catch me outside trying to grab a TV pretending that it's because a martyr named George Floyd got killed. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm a big believer that no matter what color you are, you do stupid things, you win stupid prizes. Okay? We have to do better. We have to teach our kids better. Or we're not going to get ahead. Right? Anyways, this is just a rant because I have been feeling super, super, super annoyed at these depictions in society. I, I have, you know, I have no apologies here to make. Uh, George, George Floyd is not my martyr. He can be yours. That's, and that's all I have to say to Black America. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, but um, I won't be the first one to say um, the people that she's talking about, mm -hmm. that used to be me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? The year, years ago. I mean, you know, the out here doing the dumb shit and, mm -hmm. and, and blaming everybody why I can't, oh, yeah. you know, move forward, why I can't get this job, why I can't get this job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Shit that, like, you know what I mean? Like, that was me. I was stuck in that. Like a lot of, a yeah. lot of black people. Yeah. yeah. Until I grew up, mm -hmm. got more knowledgeable, mm -hmm. understand how the world really operates and mm -hmm. what's the truth, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's when I woke up and was like, okay. So now, you know what I mean? So I, I get everything what she's saying. You know, because I was that black man mm -hmm. at, at once upon a time. Point in time. You feel me? Real talk. So, but anyway. <laughs> you want to add anything else?
it's just it's it's just it's crazy how the mindset is of of black america mm -hmm. and then we only go off things that we see on the news you know right. we don't see the the po police brutality against white people on the news mm -hmm. And it happens, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's not like it doesn't exist. It exists in white neighborhoods as well. Right. And it's just always poor me. Poor, you know what I'm saying? Poor us. Mm -hmm. But we have to be accountable for the things that we have done and how we live our life on a, on a daily. Mm -hmm. We're accountable for, for us, for who we are mm -hmm. individually. Right. And it's the, the things that black america allows and accepts is just really sad to me mm -hmm. it is yeah. you know we, like she said we can only raise our kids different and you know bring mm -hmm. l let them know <laughs> let them know the truth right right <sighs> it's frustrating yeah so anyway you all of y'all i hope y'all enjoyed that candace owens man that yes. was a long discussion mm -hmm. uh 35 minutes worth so, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. Let us know what you guys feel about it. Leave your comments down there in the comment section. Yes. You know what I mean? Because uh, open up the conversation. I know it's, we you go know, some years later about the situation and all that, but, you know, still let us know what y'all think about it, though. So, anyway, let's get into some shout out. Okay, first shout out goes to Richard Boyd. What's up, Richard Boyd? Richard Boyd, what's going on with you, man? Shout yes. out to you. I uh, hope you definitely enjoyed that, uh, Candace Owens. Uh, let us know what your thoughts is about that. Yes. Uh, and come back and join us for some more. Yes, come back. Second shout out goes to Curious C. What's up, Curious C? Curious C. <laughs> What's going on with you, man? Shout out to you. Mm -hmm. Hope you definitely enjoyed that, Candace Owens. Uh, sorry if, if, if it's a long video for y'all, but, <laughs> you know, study almost 40 minutes. But, you know, you guys want to hear what we have to say about it, so we gave it to you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we definitely appreciate everybody who yes, stuck through do. it. Uh, all the way to the end. You guys are definitely uh, uh, appreciated for sure. Yes, you are. Happy Friday to everybody once again. Mm -hmm. And we out this day. Yes. Peace. Peace.